Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video I'm gonna show you how to use the state machine behavior to create this simple NPC. So if this is the first time you're hearing these words, don't worry. We'll just use the animator component with a little bit of coding. Anyway, our enemy will be in an idle state and after 5 seconds he will enter in a patrol state. So in this state he's moving from one way point to another. And after 10 seconds of patrolling he will go back to the idle state. So in the next video we are going to add the attack and the chase one. So our enemy is not able to chase for now. So uh, we are going to use the navmesh agent to move our character in this map. So if this is the first time you are visiting my channel make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you get notified with my videos. Also make sure to share the video with your friends as well. And let's jump right into it. So first of all we need to download a character that has all of the animations that we need. And I think these two are the best. For example, this one, it comes with all of the animations like idle, run, walk, and shoot as well. And all of these are free on the Asset Store. So if you want to make a sci-fi game, you could use this character. And it has the same animations. So I'm gonna add the links under the video description. So before we create the enemy, I want to show you what I have in this project. Basically, I have created this map using the ProBuilder package. So if you want to learn how to use the ProBuilder package to build levels like this, you can watch the video. I'm gonna add the link under the video description. Also, I have created this FPS controller so I can move in this map using the AWSD keys. Also, I can jump using the spacebar button. And if you want to learn how I've made this uh, game, you can watch the whole series about the FPS game. So I'm gonna add the playlist link under the video description as well. Anyway, this game looks boring without the enemies. We're going to create a simple enemy AI behavior. In this video, we'll only focus on the idle and the patrol state. So we'll have a character that is idle by default. Then after five seconds, you're gonna start moving from one way point to another. And that's the patrol state. And after 10 seconds of patrolling, the enemy will go back to the idle state and so on. So let's go ahead and add the character. So I've downloaded this pack and under the prefabs folder, we have all of these characters. You could use any one of these. So I'm going to use this one. I think it looks good. Let's go ahead and drag it under the level. Then I'm going to paste the same player position. So let's go ahead and copy the position. And let's paste it using right click paste. Then let's double click on it to focus. And as you can see, it's a little bit small comparing to the player. So let's change the scale. So I'm going to select all of these objects and let's change the scale to 20 on the X, the Y and the Z. Then let's go ahead and move it a little bit forward and let's put it on the top of the ground. I think one on the Y is okay. And I'm gonna hit play to check out the size and I think it looks good but as you can see it's not moving at all we are going to add the idle and the patrol state using the animator controller basically we are going to add an idle animation and a walking animation so this pack comes with the animations that we need like idle you can hit play to see the animation as well so we are going to use the idle and the walk animation. But first of all we need to create an animator controller and use it under the animator component. So we can simply right click, create and let's select the animator controller. I'm gonna call it enemy AI. Then we need to select it from the animator component. So you could add this component using add component then search for the animator one. And let's go ahead and drag in the enemy AI controller under this controller field. We can open up the animator controller using the double click. And that's going to open up the animator window. So by default we didn't have any animations. So I'm gonna use the idle one. We can simply drag in the rifle idle into this window. And it will automatically set it to the default state. So our enemy will be idle by default. We can rename it from here, so I'm gonna call it idle state. Now let's go ahead and hit play. As you can see our enemy is idle, but he's not moving. After 5 seconds we are going to add the logic right now. 
But first of all, we need to fix the animation. As you can see, it stopped. We need to set it to loop time. So we can select the animation. And under this animation tab, let's go ahead and select loop time. Then hit apply. And let's add the walk animation. I'm going to use this one. And make sure to set it to loop time as well. The same thing, we need to drag it under the animator window. And let's call it patrol state. And then to switch between these states, we need to add transitions. For example, let's add a transition from idle to patrol. And also we need to go back using right click, make transition to the idle state. And to control these transitions, we need to add parameters. Under this parameters tab, I'm going to add a boolean parameter. And let's call it is patrolling. Then we can use this condition. So we can transition from idle to patrol when is patrolling is true and make sure to remove has exit time so that we can immediately switch to the state and we can transition back to the idle state if is patrolling is false this time and make sure to remove has exit time as well. Now to control this parameter I'm going to use the state machine behavior. Basically we can select an animation or a state and we can add a behavior. It's a simple script. So just click on this button, then new script, and let's call it idle state or idle behavior. And let's hit create and add. Basically, it's a C sharp script. You can open it up in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and double click on it. So when you open the script, you will see a bunch of comments, but don't worry. We're going to use these three methods. But first of all, let's go ahead and uncomment these. So we have here these three methods. So this one is called when we enter the state. So once we enter the idle state, this function will be called. It's like the start method. And we have here this on state update, which is called over and over again when the state is active. So when the player or the enemy is idle, this function is called over and over again, like the update function. And finally, we have this on state exit. And I think you guess it. This one is called when we exit the state. So when we transition to the patrol state, this one is called once. So for example, let's go ahead and create a variable or a timer so that we can check if we have passed five seconds. In that case, we can switch to the patrol state. So I'm going to go up here and let's declare a float and let's call it timer. And we can use the on state enter to set this variable using timer equals zero. Then under the update method, we can use timer plus equals the time to delta time. And down here, we can check if the timer is greater than five seconds. We can switch to the patrol state using if timer greater than five. In that case, we can simply switch to the patrol state by changing the boolean is patrolling. And basically we can access the animator controller using this animator variable. So we can use animator dot set boolean and the boolean is called is patrolling and let's change it to true now let's save that and if we go back into unity when we hit play you will see that the player transition to the patrol state after five seconds so let's hit play so by default our enemy is idle and after five seconds he's walking so we didn't add the logic to move the enemy from one way point to another we are going to add that later on. But as you can see, our enemy transitioned to the patrol state. We need to transition back as well to the idle one. So the same thing, we can add a script to this patrol state to check if the timer is greater than 10 seconds. Then we can switch back to the idle state. So the same thing, select the patrol state and let's add a behavior. I'm gonna call it patrol behavior. Then you can hit enter and let's go ahead and open it up. The same thing, let's uncomment these. Let's create a float timer and let's initialize it to zero under the on state enter using timer equals zero. Then the same thing in this update method. So I'm going to copy and paste these lines of code and let's paste them under this on state update. And this time I'm going to change it to 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds of patrolling, we will switch back to the idle state by changing is patrolling to false. 
Now let's save the script and go back into Unity. So our enemy is idle, and after 5 seconds, he's moving. After 10 seconds of patrolling, he will go back to the idle state. And yeah, it's the case. So we are going to add the logic of the patrol state. So in order to move this enemy from one waypoint to another, when he's in the patrol state, first of all we need to create few waypoints. You could create an empty game object, but I'm gonna use spheres. And let's call it waypoint. Then make sure to place it on the top of the ground. And let's duplicate it few times. And I think that's fine. So let's go ahead and select all of these. We need to remove the collider, so we don't need the sphere collider. Then you could uncheck the mesh renderer if you don't want to see these spheres. And let's go ahead and put them under an empty game object. So let's create an empty game object. I'm gonna call it waypoints. And let's drag in all of these under this empty game object. Then let's go ahead and open up the patrol behavior script. And under here, first of all, we need to add a reference to the waypoints. So I'm going to create a list of waypoints. And we need just the transform. And let's call it waypoints. And I'm going to set it to a new list of transform. And under the onStateEnter method, we can add all of the waypoints. But first of all, we need to get the waypoints empty game object. And to do that, I'm going to use find object with tag. So we need to tag this waypoints object. First we need to add a tag using this plus icon and let's call it waypoints and make sure to copy that we are going to use this tag then save and let's go ahead and assign it to this empty game object by changing the tag to the waypoints one and then under this script we can access the object so let's add transform and let's call it waypoints object then I'm gonna set it to game object dot find object with tag so we can access the object using the tag and make sure to paste the same name and we need the transform using dot transform now we can simply use the for each loop to loop through all of the children and assign them under this waypoints list using for each transform t in waypoints object and in order to add it to the list let's use waypoints dot add and let's pass in the t variable now we have all of the waypoints we can tell our enemy to go from one waypoint to another and the easiest way to move the enemy in this map is using the nav mesh agent so we can add a nav mesh agent component and then we can tell this enemy to move to one of these waypoints by calling the function set destination so don't worry we just need to select the enemy so i'm gonna call it enemy then let's go ahead and add the nav mesh agent component using add component nav mesh agent you could also change few settings like the speed the angular speed and the height and the radius and i think the default values are okay for our character now before we use the set destination method we need to tell our enemy about the map and we do that by selecting all of the objects under this map and we need to change this parameter from nothing to navigation static and make sure to select it yes change children as well once you have done that we can open up the navigation window using window ai then navigation and we can go under this bake and let's hit bake and that's going to show us the parts that the enemy can walk so our enemy can go over here in this blue area you could also change few settings like the max slope, the step height and so on. So let's leave everything as default and let's hit bake. Now we can go to this patrol behavior script and under the on state enter we can use the set destination method to move our enemy to one of the waypoints. But first of all we need to add a reference to the nav mesh agent and we need to use the namespace unityengine.ai. So let's go up here using unity engine dot ai then we can go under here and let's declare nav mesh agent so this is the type and let's call it agent then we can simply access it using this animator component so we can use agent 
equals animator dot get component and we need to access the nav mesh agent component and then we can use agent dot set destination and we can simply pass in the waypoint position so I'm gonna pass in waypoints and let's use the first one dot position now let's save the script and let's hit play so our enemy is idle and after 5 seconds as you can see he's moving to the first waypoint but we need to make sure to change the waypoint to another one when he reaches the current waypoint and to do that let's go back to the script and under the on state update we can check if the enemy reaches the waypoint or the current destination we can use if agent dot remaining distance so if the remaining distance is less or equal to the stopping distance using agent dot stopping distance that means that our enemy reaches the waypoint in that case we can change the destination using agent dot set destination and I'm gonna pass in a random one using waypoints and I'm gonna pass in a random index using random dot range then I'm gonna pass in zero and the waypoints length using waypoints dot count and of course we need the position so use dot position and let's go ahead and save the script and now our enemy will go from one waypoint to another you could also change few settings so for example we can change the speed under the nav mesh agent component so I'm gonna change the speed to 3 and let's see our enemy as you can see he's moving to one of the waypoints and after 10 seconds of patrolling he will go back to the idle state but as you can see when the enemy go to the idle state he's still moving to the waypoint so we can simply solve that using the on state exit function so under the patrol state so when we exit the patrol state we need to make sure to stop the agent and to do that we can use agent dot stop so this function is deprecated if it doesn't work we can use set destination and we can set the current destination using agent dot transform dot position and that's going to stop our enemy when we exit the patrol state so i think that's pretty much it guys for this video i hope you like it and uh, learned how to use the state machine behavior to create this simple npc in the next video we are going to add the attack and the chase state it's very easy to add more states so before we finish this video make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon i appreciate that also make sure to share this video with your friends so that they can learn as well and uh, have a great day